Hi and welcome, I'm Gavin Lahn. .NET 8 will officially be released in November 2023. For those of you who are not familiar with the evolution history of .NET, please see a link to my playlist of videos that explain the evolution of .NET. All links shown in this video are available below in the description of this video. So, this playlist on the evolution of .NET includes information regarding .NET Framework and .NET Core, .NET Standard, .NET 5, .NET 6, and .NET 7. In this video, we'll discuss some of the amazing new improvements and features that stand out to me that will be released with .NET 8. .NET 7, the latest official release of .NET, was released November 2022 and is what's known as a short-term support release, meaning that it is supported free of charge for 18 months after its release. .NET 8 will be a long-term support release, meaning that it will be supported free of charge for three years after its release. At the time of the creation of this video, several preview releases of .NET 8 are available. The latest preview release of .NET 8 is Preview 5. This preview release can be downloaded from this location. So, you are able to try out .NET 8 even before it is officially released by downloading and installing the latest preview release of .NET 8. In this video, I'll broadly discuss what I believe to be the standout features that will be released with .NET 8. I'll discuss these features under the following headings. We'll start with Blazor, then progress to Cloud Native, and then discuss new c -sharp features and improvements in the .NET Publish and .NET Pack commands. And lastly, we'll briefly discuss .NET MAUI in terms of .NET 8. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage. At this location, it will be greatly appreciated. So, let's start by discussing some of the new features of Blazor that will be released with .NET 8. For a comprehensive course on Blazor, please check out my full Blazor course, where we create a shopping cart application using Blazor WebAssembly and .NET Web API. You can access this course from this location. I also created a full course for Free Code Camp, where we create a sales management application using Blazor Server and the Syncfusion front-end components. This course also includes a comprehensive guide on how to include authentication and authorization functionality within a Blazor application. We use Microsoft Identity for this functionality. You can access this course on the free CodeCamp YouTube channel at this location. So one of the great investments in .NET 8 is a feature currently called Blazor United. The name Blazor United may change at the time of the official release in November of this year, 2023. So what is Blazor United? Basically, Blazor United seeks to unify disparate components of the ASP.NET Core ecosystem to form a new tooling framework borrowing features from Razor Pages, MVC, CSHTML, and the Blazor server and client-side WebAssembly frameworks. So, for example, you'll be able to appropriately include features inherent in Blazor server with the features inherent in Blazor WebAssembly within one project. A really great feature included in Blazor United is server-side rendering. Previously, you'd have to use frameworks like ASP.NET MVC or ASP.NET Razor Pages for server-side rendering functionality. With .NET 8, you'll be able to achieve server-side rendering from within your Blazor applications. So what is server-side rendering and what are the benefits of server-side rendering? Server-side rendering, or SSR, is when your website or web application's HTML is rendered on the server. This is as opposed to when your website or web application content is rendered client-side, CSR, client-side rendering, in the browser through the manipulation of the DOM through appropriate JavaScript code. The advantages of server-side rendering include faster load times, which includes the initial loading of your website or web application, as well as faster page transitions within your website or web application. SSR is great for boosting your SEO, search engine optimization, because it indexes your pages before they are loaded in the browser. With server-side rendering, content is theoretically easier to crawl and be indexed. Indexing SSR sites is much easier for search engines than client-side rendered sites. 
the content is rendered before the page is loaded, so JavaScript does not need to be run to read and index the relevant pages. More accurate user metrics. Unlike CSR, client-side rendering, SSR, server-side rendering, will inform the server as users move between your web pages. Evaluating how your users navigate your site and interact with your content will help you continually improve the user interface and user experience. SSR is ideal for static web pages, as it is faster to pre-render a static page on the server before sending it to the client. SSR is excellent for social media optimization. This means previews of your website can be easily presented with the relevant page title, description, and image wherever your web page's content is shared on social media platforms. Another excellent feature released with .NET 8 and Blazor United is streaming rendering. This will allow you to use server-side rendering for part of a web page, as well as load long-running content retrieval functionality in the background asynchronously, which means your application will still behave like a SPA application even though server-side rendering is implemented. Streaming rendering allows content to be delivered from the server to the client before the entire web page is loaded. So for example, you could load the shell of the web page before the main content that is perhaps retrieved from a database is loaded and presented to the user in the user's browser. This means pixels are on the screen almost immediately, which ultimately is great for user experience. So for example, the header containing navigation and a logo, a hero image, a footer, could be loaded almost immediately when the relevant page is accessed, but content that takes longer to retrieve, for example, a list of product-related content retrieved from a remote relational database can be loaded in the background through streaming rendering. So this ultimately gives your application the same SPA application feel, which is a core reason to use the Blazor framework in the first place. So streaming rendering can improve the user's experience for server-side rendered pages that need to perform long-running async tasks in order to fully render a page. So with Blazor United, you can leverage the benefits attained through the use of server-side rendering while still maintaining the UX benefits inherent in SPA applications by combining server-side rendering with streaming rendering for handling long-running asynchronous tasks related to your content. With Blazor United, the developer has the flexibility to leverage Blazor WebAssembly components and Blazor Server components on the same page through the use of simple declarative code. So Blazor United is a very powerful feature that offers the developer increased flexibility in the construction of web pages, as well as the ability to enhance the relevant application's UX, user experience. Right, let's look at cloud-native enhancements that come with .NET 8. Firstly, what is meant by cloud-native? So the information presented to you in this section of the video has been gleaned from Brady Gaster's recent presentation made at Microsoft Build. Brady Gaster is the principal program manager of the .NET team. In this presentation, he provides an excellent overview of improvements that .NET 8 brings in terms of cloud-native development. So I urge you to please watch the entire presentation that can be found at this location. He provides a great definition of cloud-native. This definition of cloud-native is used as the foundation for the presentation. The CNCF cloud-native definition says, Cloud-native technologies empower organizations to build and run scalable applications in modern, dynamic environments such as public, private, and hybrid clouds. Containers, service meshes, microservices, immutable infrastructure, and declarative APIs exemplify this approach. These techniques enable loosely coupled systems that are resilient, manageable, and observable. Combined with robust automation, they allow engineers to make high-impact changes frequently and predictably with minimal toil. The improvements to cloud-native development in .NET 8 that I'd like to highlight fall under these three headings. Resilience, observability, native AOT. AOT stands for Ahead of Time Compilation. Resilience. Pods are going up and down all the time, i.e. bouncing. If a call from the client is made to the server and the relevant microservice or microservices are temporarily down, you don't want your application to just stop working and throw an exception. 
This will result in a terrible UX user experience. Just by adding a piece of declarative code, you can add resilience into your microservice. So let's say a pod goes down, the client makes a request to the relevant API, running within the pod that is currently down, instead of the process being stopped by the relevant inactive pod, the code tries again to call the relevant code that is temporarily inactive due to the pod being down. So after a few seconds, let's say on the next try, the relevant pod is now up and running. A call to the relevant server-side code succeeds. This means that the user experience is not disrupted by the pod temporarily going down, and the user's experience with your application remains smooth. So this is very powerful. With a simple piece of declarative code, the performance of the cloud-native application is significantly increased, and the user's experience is smooth and efficient. So this functionality can be found within two new namespaces in .NET 8, namely Microsoft.extensions.resilience and Microsoft.extensions.http.resilience. In terms of observability, a new feature that makes log redaction possible has been added. So for example, if you don't want certain sensitive client information included within your logs, the functionality to redact this information is now available. Native AOT ahead of time compilation in .NET 8 is available. With AOT compilation, the app code and runtime are included within a single executable, which means reduced size on disk and faster startup times, a small memory footprint. As you scale out the application, the size of the relevant files should be small, which results in a significant reduced storage space and significantly faster startup times for your application, so this can result in massive performance improvements. New c -sharp features. Two new read-only collection data types are introduced with .NET 8, i.e. the frozen dictionary and frozen set collection data types. So these types allow you to create frozen collections, i.e. read-only collections. These read-only collections incur higher creation costs, but better read performance. The use case for these types is lookup collections that live a long time. Two new methods are provided with .NET 8 for randomness functionality. With the getItems method, you can randomly choose a specific number of items from an input set. The new random.shuffle and random number generator.shuffle methods let you randomize the order of a span. These methods are useful for reducing training bias in machine learning. The .NET Publish and .NET Pack commands. The .NET Publish and .NET Pack commands are intended to produce production assets, and they now produce release assets by default. In the previous version of .NET, this could be accomplished but with additional configuration. The relevant release assets are now produced by default when running the .NET Publish and .NET Pack commands. .NET MAUI .NET MAUI in .NET 8 Preview 5 is now available and includes a lot of bug fixes and performance improvements for cross-platform app development. Please navigate to this location to see what's new in .NET MAUI in .NET 8 Preview 5. You can see here in this document that several improvements and bug fixes have been made for .NET MAUI in .NET 8. iOS keyboard scrolling, test improvements, performance enhancements, and bug fixes. There are a lot of performance improvements and new features included in .NET 8, which even though the official release is not due until November of this year, 2023, you are able to explore these new features and improvements by trying out the preview releases. The latest preview release at the time of creating this video is Preview 5. Microsoft is releasing a new official release of .NET every year. The official release of .NET 8 is due in November of this year, 2023, and the official release of .NET 9 is due to be released in November of 2024. .NET can be used by developers to create highly performant applications on a diverse array of platforms. With a multitude of performance enhancements and improvements being made every year coupled with the excellent support from both the .NET community and Microsoft, 
Well, this makes it a great time to be a .NET developer. There are a lot of improvements and new features included in .NET 8. In this video, I've covered a few of the features and improvements that stand out to me. Please let me know in the comments section what new .NET 8 features or improvements stand out to you. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this location. It will be greatly appreciated. All of the links that I have mentioned in this video are available in the description of this video. Thank you and take care.